Hello beautiful people! Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Bitsy and I post videos every Wednesday and every Friday. So I just posted a TikTok letting you guys know to ask me all of your makeup questions so I can answer them right now in this video. I want to keep this intro short so I can answer as many questions as possible, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Clearly, I'm going to start off with a clean face so I can answer your questions as I'm doing that step. Okay, question number one. Jenna asked, is moisturizer necessary? <laughs> yes. A common misconception is that if you have oily skin, you shouldn't moisturize, and that is completely false. Whether your skin is dry or oily or a combination, you should be moisturizing because not moisturizing will actually cause your skin to overcompensate and produce more oil than it normally would. So if you deal with oily skin and you're not moisturizing, that's probably why you're getting even more oily after you put on makeup. And on top of that, you should always start with moisturizer so all of your products have something to stick to, to lay on top of, and so your skin isn't so dry and flaky, and it really helps your skin just look more smooth and flawless under your foundation. Okay, next question. Mackenzie asked, why is it when I put on makeup, it never goes on right? It doesn't look smooth and it's grainy, brand new makeup. I'm using primer and stuff before. Clarinet underscore three asks how to find your foundation shade. Now going through it, I have a lot of questions about foundation, so I'll go a little bit more in depth on this one. To start out, I always use a wet beauty blender. This one is by Real Techniques. And I'm gonna be using the Superstay Full Coverage Foundation by Maybelline. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dot that everywhere. Now I probably have like 30 different foundations, all different shades, all different undertones. I actually get really, really tan in the summer and when I'm in the sun. Right now, I'm actually pretty pale, so I'm using some of my lighter foundations. I usually find my foundation shade by trial and error. I get a lot of questions about undertones, and sometimes it can be really hard to tell whether you have pink undertones or yellow undertones or neutral undertones. For me personally, I have more yellow undertones, and I can tell that by the color of my skin whenever I do get tan. It's definitely more on the orangey yellow side and more golden rather than more pink. So if you're shopping for a foundation, say you're in the drugstore, a lot of the time you can't open the bottle and actually swatch it and try it. I'd say hold the bottle up to your arm and see if it's the best match. This does look a little light, but my face is a little bit lighter than my arm. So I know that this would probably be a good match. And if you really can't figure out if you are cool toned or warm toned or what that even means, it's really, really easy to stick with something that says neutral and neutral undertones. Okay, and back to Mackenzie's question about how to make it look so smooth and flawless. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little, little secret. I showed you guys what my skin looked like before I put foundation on and suddenly now it looks perfect and smooth and blurred. Although foundation does help make it all one color, it does not decrease the size of your acne. <laughs> and it's all kind of just an illusion that it's all just one color, so you can't really see the dimension. But when I look closely into a mirror, I have a little handheld mirror right here. When I look closely into this mirror, I can see all of my pores, I can see all of my acne, but from a distance, you can't. If you do struggle from like acne and fine lines and scars, and it's really hard for you to cover it and it never feels perfect, that's okay, because it basically never is perfect. I have tried literally almost every single foundation on the market. And I don't have a holy grail, this covers my acne and makes me look like I have perfect skin. Maybe in photos and on video, but in person, it's really, really hard to come across like you have perfect skin if you don't naturally. With that being said, one mistake that I see a lot, a lot of people make is the need to be porcelain and matte and flawless. They don't add any liquid products and you really want your skin to look as natural as possible. I love dewy, glowy skin, so I always set my face with this Pixie Glow Mist. And this is the best way to make your foundation look like it is your skin, but better. Now, I've also seen a lot of comments asking me, can I just conceal my problem areas and not wear foundation? Like, is that okay? The answer is yes. You don't have to wear a full face of foundation just to do makeup. You can just spot conceal with concealer that is closer to your skin color because you don't want to use something super light like this. Or you can even use foundation. Like if you have a foundation that is like the closest color to your skin and it's full coverage and you like it, but you just don't really like wearing a full face of makeup, you can just squirt some foundation on a little blending brush like this and just spot conceal and blend it into your natural skin and just set it with powder and you're fine. And you can even bronze and blush and everything. You don't need to use a base of foundation before you do your makeup. Going foundation to concealer and powder and all of that, that's just pretty much what's normalized in the beauty community, but you do not have to do those steps to do your makeup. Next, I'm gonna be using the Airspun Loose Setting Powder. And one of the most common questions I just received is, what is baking? What is the difference between a loose powder and a pressed powder? And what is the difference between baking and just normal powder? Loose powder. It's 
this powder that's all dusty. Oh, see, yep. <laughs> Shoot. I'm going to use it. It's okay. I'll savor that. Anyways, yes, that's loose powder. It usually makes a mess and it goes everywhere. And that is what you use for baking. You usually throw it on the end of your beauty blender like that, like a flat surface. So what you see people carving their cheeks with like that and setting underneath their eyes when they let it just sit there and bake, that's what baking is. And this is pressed powder. So it's just going to be powder in a pan. It's not going to I thought that all just fell out, but it was just a little sponge. Okay, it's not gonna fall out if you hold it upside down. It's all just compacted into this little pan. You can set your face either way. Usually a rule of thumb is you just saw me conceal under my eyes, my forehead, my nose, and my chin. I set all of the places that I concealed with loose setting powder. But the main difference is, is that loose setting powder is very, very absorbent and very, very dry. Basically the whole point of powder, whether it's loose powder or pressed powder, is to set your foundation and set your concealer with something powdery so it's not liquidy, so it's not movable, so it just stays where you put it and doesn't wipe away anymore. Okay, I've seen this question like 30 times already. Um, this is by Madison. She asked, that, what is the difference between contour and bronzer and how to apply both correctly? So I'm gonna be using my Too Faced bronzer. Bronzer really just warms up your face. It brings color and dimension back into it after you just kind of made it all one color. Normal natural skin isn't just one color all the way through. Skin has dimension and you have shadows and you really want to re-enhance that after you do foundation. So that's why people use bronzer. It's to warm up your face again, kind of bring back some life, make it look like you just got a little bit of sun. Now, like the question that pretty much everybody is wondering, what is the difference between bronzer and contour? First of all, bronzer is a product and contour is not a product. Like you can go buy some bronzer from the store. You can't buy contour from the store. You're going to buy a contour shade which can also be a bronzer. So yes, in term, bronzer and contour can be the same thing, but they mean different things. I use bronzer to warm up my whole face, bring back some color, but I use contour to give myself dimension, to fake a cheekbone shadow. Does, I hope that makes sense. So this is what my face looks like all bronze, but now we're gonna contour on top of that and I'll explain it a little bit better. I'm using this bronzer by Physicians Formula, and yes, I said bronzer. Now contouring is when you're gonna wanna suck in your cheeks or move your mouth to one side and really see that line, you see. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stipple it in there. I also see that Molly asked concealer then contour or the other way around. I do concealer, set it with powder and then contour. To answer a couple questions about liquid and cream products versus powder products, I tend to gravitate towards powder products because that's what I always grew up using. I'm one that finds something that I like and I stick to it and I don't really like to branch out and try new things. I have tried cream contouring and everything, but I've always just found that I really like how the powder looks better, but it is completely up to you. They do do the same thing. So if you use a cream contour stick and you'd rather use that than powder, that is totally fine. That's, it's literally just personal preference. Okay, another common question that I got was asking me about nose contour. Um, I don't know if you guys watch my videos or not, but I never contour my nose, but I'll go ahead and explain it to you. It's one of those things that's very, very easy to mess up and look bad, especially in person. If you're not putting the product in the right places, you can completely just kind of screw up your nose. It's probably best if you don't know what you're doing to just leave your nose alone and don't worry about it. Kind of just embrace how your natural nose looks. You don't need to do all that. But I'm going to go ahead and take a little small brush like this, dip it into my bronzer and if you look at where the shadows are, you're gonna start right around your eyebrow and drag it down. It's better to start off light with just a little bit of product rather than the other way around. It's very buildable, but it's harder to take product away. I'm just doing a line here and a line here and that's it. But I'm blending it all the way up into my eyebrows just so it looks like a natural shadow. I wanna leave the top of my nose alone how I made it, but I'm gonna go ahead and blend those edges out along the sides. You can also throw a little bit of bronzer right underneath your nose just to make it look more lifted, more button-like. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and do blush. There's not many questions about blush other than where to put it, and that is personal preference. You can go ahead and just throw it right on the apples of your cheeks and leave it right there if you want. I like to blend mine into my bronzer so it looks a little bit more natural. And just like if you naturally had redness on your face, it kind of goes all the way up onto your nose and under your eyes. So I just like to do this little shape. So I pretty much put blush everywhere but that's because i like blush i like how it looks on my face um but yeah you can use as little or as much or none if you want 
Okay, so I just real quickly read through some of these comments and a lot of people were asking me about where do you put contour? One thing I noticed a lot with people who are just starting makeup is that they put their bronzer way, way, way too low and it doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. You're contouring down here instead of above your cheekbone. If you're just contouring right on it or below it, it's not actually enhancing or lifting your face the way it should be. Adding a darker bronzer or contour shade to certain areas of your face actually helps you fake shadows and dimension, as I've mentioned before, but why do you do that? So if you put them on the temples of your face, like I bring mine up here, and that actually makes your face look skinnier, and I have a very, very round face, so doing that makes my face look a little skinnier because this starts to look like a shadow. And then same thing with the top of your forehead. By contouring or bronzing the top of your forehead, it actually makes it look smaller. A lot of people with round faces like myself actually contour their jawline in order to make their jawline look more sharp and defined. And you contour your nose right here to kind of just make it look more skinny or give it a shape that it doesn't already have. Also, I had a couple questions about how to make your contour look blended and faded rather than muddy and cakey. And number one tip is going to be to set it with your powder first. So you're gonna go ahead and before you bronze, set your foundation or concealer, whatever's on your cheeks, and even if you have nothing and you just have moisturizer on, put just a plain colored powder or a translucent powder on your cheek first, and then that helps the other powder have something to go over and just glide right on top of. Only need to start with a tiny, tiny little amount. So whenever you're going in with your brush and this is the pan, you're just gonna go ahead and go little, little taps like this. You're gonna start really lightly with a very, very light, gentle hand like this, and you're just gonna go up and down right on your cheekbone, and then you're gonna kind of diffuse it, little circles, but you wanna go more up. You wanna always bring it higher rather than lower. Why do people bake and put powder right here after they bronze? It doesn't really make sense. What does that do? It actually makes this part of your face look lighter and has a nice sharp separation between the contour and your regular face. Number one thing I wanna get across about bronzer is don't just draw a line and then kind of blend it up and down and call it a day and leave it like harsh line. You wanna really just blend it in to the rest of your skin until it just has a natural diffuse type of fade. And a lot of the questions I got were just eyebrows, period. Just how do I do eyebrows? You can use a pomade, you can use a powder, you can use a pencil, you can use an eyebrow gel. There's a lot of different ways to do your eyebrows and there is no right or wrong way. But to achieve my favorite type of eyebrows, aka the ones that I do in all of my videos and how I always do my makeup, I always use a pomade and a little brush like this. I'm gonna start by underlining my brows starting somewhere right in the middle and not in the front. So I'm just gonna go ahead and underline the whole thing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and outline the top of it and kind of just also filling in the middle at the same time. Underline this, but really, really lightly, barely using any pressure. And then do the same thing up top, just to kind of make them like parallel lines here. And I'm gonna go ahead and lightly, lightly, lightly fill in this front part. Again, I'm barely using any pressure and I never picked up more product from my brush. I'm just blending what was already on my brush a little bit forward. And you can go ahead and just flick up your spoolie and just blend out that front just so it can blend into your natural skin. Top her off with some eyebrow mascara, aka eyebrow gel, and I'm just gonna go ahead and brush through these hairs and kind of just brush all of my hairs upwards. That was basically just a really quick eyebrow tutorial. If you wanna see something more in depth, like how I do my Instagram like glam type of eyebrows, you can watch any of my other tutorials. I have full tutorials on just my eyebrows. Probably one of the most reoccurring questions I get on all of my videos is, what is a good makeup palette to begin with? What is a good starter palette? What's a good inexpensive cheap makeup palette that I should start out with that has everything I need? I usually consider Morphe a, a high-end brand, but they're so inexpensive and I think a lot of people don't realize that. This is probably one of my favorite palettes that I would recommend for any starter because it is every single neutral shade, especially if you're not really comfortable yet with branching out with colors but it does have a couple fun red and orange colors for people who wanna to try to use a little bit more color in their looks. But for an everyday type of look, this is the best palette to practice with. All the information on this palette will be linked in my description box below, including how much it is and where to get it. But if I were a beginner, I would probably just stick with one shade. So I'm just gonna grab this like little orangey tan shade right here. I'm just gonna pack that right on my lid on both sides at the same time, just like that. You might be like, wow, that's not cute. Well, that's the power of blending. I get a lot, a lot of questions about how do I blend my eyeshadow? And so I'm going to show you. I'm just gonna work this eyeshadow back and forth just like this without ever picking up more product. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it upwards in little circular motions, just like that, little circles, 
windshield wiper motions, meaning like back and forth like this. Notice it only took one little dip in the pan to fully cover both eyes. Barely touching and barely putting any pressure on little circular motions. And that's how I get that diffused line up here instead of a harsh line. Work it in little circles like this. Just really focus on blending it out with a really, really light hand and using circular motions like this, and you'll eventually get this gradient ombre type of look. And that goes for literally any color. So for my beginners, I really, really highly, highly recommend really get your blending and technique down with just a one color look just like this. So today, all I'm going to do is just use this one color and that's it. So I'm going to grab a tiny little fluffy brush like this one and I'm going to go ahead with the same color on it and I'm going to go ahead and throw that right underneath my eyes. So now for the part that literally all of you guys were asking for, what everybody wants to see, liquid eyeliner. How do I do a wing? What is your technique? What is the right way to do a wing? And let me just start off by saying there isn't a right way to do a wing. You can use a straight edge to kind of just trace out your wing. You can just freehand it like I usually do. You can use a gel or you can use eyeshadow. You can use a brush, like it doesn't matter. You can do your wings however you feel comfortable doing them. I just typically use a pen because I feel like that is the easiest way to do it. It's just like drawing with pencil. I held it close to the tip like this just so I have as much control as possible. I'm just gonna go ahead and start in the corner and drag it out. And a little tip is when you're drawing it like this, I always put one finger on my face for stability and it makes it a little bit more secure and stable so you're not sitting there shaking like this. It really just depends on your eye shape, how or where you want to draw your wing. For me, I have pretty big eyes. I like to make them as elongated as possible so I usually go as straight out as I can so my eyeliner usually just goes straight here. Um, but for a lot of people, they like to go up, they like to just make it a little. You can do it as little or as long as you want. I'm going to go ahead and start right in this corner right where my lower lash line ends and i'm just going to go ahead and flick it up just like that just kind of draw a tiny little line try to make it as even as i can on this side starting right on my lower lash line and flicking it up now starting somewhere in the middle of this line like say right here i'm just going to go ahead and drag it out and connect it to the rest of the eyeliner just like that same thing on this side somewhere in the middle drag it out and connect it and then you can go ahead and fill in that middle part so another eyeliner tip if you want it to go <laughs> into as straight and sharp of a line as possible but you can't usually get there get a q-tip a little bit wet look how sharp that line is now eyeliner is one of the hardest things to really master it takes a lot of practice but not only that it takes a lot of patience it is not a race to see who can finish their makeup the fastest the more you focus and sit there and just try to get a perfectly straight line you can take some makeup remover and try it again if you didn't get it right the first time that's okay keep practicing until they come out as even as possible there is no such thing as perfect like today, I don't love how my eyeliner turned out, but that's okay. I've been doing eyeliner for eight years, and I'm still not perfect at it. Probably the biggest difference in eyeliner is always making sure your wings come out to a very, very sharp point. So I just finished up my makeup. I just threw on some mascara and some lip gloss, but I'm still going to answer a couple more questions. So Taylor asked, how do you avoid eyeshadow fallout on your face if you've done your whole face with makeup already and you do your eyeshadow last, especially with like brighter colors or if you're using a black or a brown it is the most frustrating thing in the world if some of that powder falls out and lands right underneath your eye or on your cheeks then how do you get that off and not ruin the whole face with makeup that you've already done one big tip is after you go ahead and tap into a color go ahead and tap the end of your palette like this to kind of get that excess powder off so that excess powder doesn't fall off whenever you're on your eye. It's kind of inevitable that it will happen now and then, but I've learned that to correct that mistake, instead of taking your beauty blender and trying to like work it in, you're just gonna kind of blend it out and work it into your face. You don't wanna do that. While it's still loose and just sitting there, you wanna take a big fluffy brush like this and just kind of brush it away as lightly and quickly as you possibly can. So Brooklyn asked, how do I make my makeup last all day if your skin is a little bit more oily number one starting off with a primer like this elf poreless putty primer start off with a primer then set your primer with powder just lightly set it with powder and then go over it with 
a good foundation to use for oily skin matte and poreless by Maybelline this is a very cheap foundation everything I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description box below and then you want to set it all with powder on top of that and to lock it all in and finish it all up you want to set your face with preferably a mattifying setting spray okay next Liana and Fiona both asked what are like the proper steps slash like order you should be doing your makeup in? You're gonna see a lot of people with completely different routines. I, for one, I start with my face, then I do my eyebrows, and then I go back to my face, and then I do my eyes. Like I do my makeup all over the place, but there's not a proper right or wrong way. There's no step by step, you need to do it in this order for it to turn out right. Really just do your makeup in whatever order makes sense to you that you feel comfortable with. Say if you have a really hard time with eyeliner and eyeshadow, you might want to do that first because then you can always go back and clean it up with a makeup wipe or makeup remover and then do your foundation after that. Okay, so Madison asked, how do I avoid having like clumpy or cakey foundation? So I start off with a clean face, I exfoliate my skin and I wash it and then I come in, I sit down, I moisturize my skin, I use a primer. Once again, my poreless putty primer kind of cover all my little laws. My saving grace product right now is this Pixi Glow Mist because it really, really helps hydrate your skin and make it look dewy and glowy and radiant and not cakey. Between every single step, I always spray my face a little bit with this Glow Mist just to keep it nice and hydrated and glowy and also always using a wet beauty sponge. For some reason, getting my sponge wet before I go in with my foundation really just helps to blend it out and sink into my skin rather than just lay on top of it and cake thicker and thicker. Okay. And Amy asked, what is a primer and what does it do? What's the point of a primer? So most primers have kind of more of a either silicone or a sticky texture. So whenever you put it on, it gives your base, like your foundation or concealer, a nice place to lay on. Just like when you're painting your walls or when you're painting your car, both of those things require a primer first so it goes on as smoothly and flawlessly as possible. You wanna prime your skin first and then go over top of that primer with your foundation. The two usually just correspond together and it helps your skin just look more even textured and it also helps your foundation stick and stay put all day. Okay, but I, I think that that's everything. I truly, truly hope that I answered a lot of your questions. If there's anything you want me to go a little bit more in depth about or answer more questions, just leave a comment down below if you're still wondering anything and maybe I can make a part two. But as always, I love you guys so much. And while you're still here before the video ends, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel down below. All right, guys, and that is it for today's video. I hope you are all staying safe, staying healthy, and staying home. And while you are there, you should watch my next video. <laughs>